Hi, this pediatric orthopedic lecture will be about osteoid osteoma. The objectives of this lecture is to explain the pathology, the presentation, and the imaging of osteoid osteoma, and to outline the treatment of osteoid osteoma. A good source that you can use is this book, Pediatric Orthopedic and Sport Medicine. It's authored by myself, Dr. Naga, and Dr. Abdu, and it is the second edition of our previous book. The osteoid osteoma is a benign tumor. So the osteoid osteoma is a benign tumor. It consists of well demarcated uh, uh, bone forming lesion called nidus. And that nidus produces abundant of pro inflammatory cytokines. Uh, that's the cause of the pain, as we will see later, uh, leading, leading to radio dense reactive zone of host bone. So osteoid osteoma is a benign tumor. So it's not malignant. It's a benign tumor and it consists of well demarcated bone forming lesion called the nidus which you can see it here and then the nidus produces uh, abundant pro-inflammatory cytokine and that will cause sclerosis of the host bone uh, so the instance, it's most commonly in the second and third decades. That's why pediatrician can see this condition because um, it can affect um, uh, people in their second and, and third decades. And it more commonly in males with a ratio of two to one. Regarding the site, uh, it commonly affects the diaphysis of the bone. Um, uh, it's sometimes affecting the spine, resulting in painful scoliosis. So if you see here, this is a picture of the uh, tibia and fibula. And uh, here you can see obvious sclerosis uh, compared to uh, a above and below. So this is sclerosis is, as we said in the previous score, uh, the reaction that the host bone uh, can have uh, uh, due to the osteoid osteoma uh, in that bone. So an uh, instance, it um, commonly happens in the second and third decades. So it's something that, uh, that happens early in life. So it's not for uh, elderly. It, um, it, it happens in the second and third decade. It's more common in males. And in the um, uh, skeleton, it affects more the diaphysis of the bone. And and sometimes it can affect the spine resulting in scoliosis. Patient with osteoid osteoma will present with pain. This pain has um, a certain characteristics. Uh, it's usually nighttime pain and it is relieved with non-steroidal. So you'll find the parents coming with the child saying that this child has pain, for example, in the left leg, uh, usually at night. And when they give the patient ibuprofen, um, the patient will feel better. Uh, so um, nighttime pain and it's relieved with non-steroidal. Uh, as we took before, um, the uh, osteoid osteoma um, result in secretion of inflammatory cytokines. Uh, that's why the non-steroidal is very e effective in treating uh, the pain in these case patients. Uh, pain will start as vague pain, but when it becomes uh, more severe, it will become aching in character. And this pain is not relieved by rest. Uh, this is very important. So this pain um, is not relieved by rest. As we said, the pain is due to the um, uh, pro-inflammatory cytokine that is uh, secreted uh, with the osteoid osteoma. So rest will not help to uh, decrease that pain. So what is the imaging in cases of osteoid osteoma? The x-rays may show a small defect surrounded by sclerosis. However, this usually does not happen. All what you will see is the surrounding sclerosis. In most cases, you will never see the nidus itself. Uh, you will just see the associated sclerosis, as you can see here. So this is normal cortex here. This is normal cortex here. Here is normal cortex. And here you, there is lots of associated sclerosis around this area. So what you see in the x-rays in most cases of osteoid osteoma is the associated scler sclerosis and not the nidus. Usually the nidus can only be seen in fine cuts CT. So if you see here, this is the, X, the CAT scan of the tibia that we saw in the previous slide. If you look closely here, you will see a small, very small nidus surrounded by radiolucid area. And then this is all sclerosis around it. So this is the same picture that we saw in the previous uh, uh, slide. Um, all what you can see in the x-ray, you will see all this surrounded sclerosis. You will not see the nidus. The nidus is usually in the fine cut CT. You can see here the small area here is the nidus surrounded by radiolucent area surrounded by the sclerosis in the host bone. Here we can review again. This is the x-ray. You can see here normal cortex, 
normal cortex normal cortex very thickening and sclerosis here cat scan this is uh, uh, the uh, axial cut as we showed in the last slide you can see the nidus surrounded by radiolucent area and then this is the sclerosis in the host bone this is the coronal cut here you can see the area radiolucent here surrounded by the massive sclerosis so this is a CAT scan for pseudosteoma of the spine. As we said, the pseudosteoma can sometimes come in the spine, uh, causing them, uh, causing painful scoliosis. So whenever you have a painful scoliosis, think about osteoma. So in the CAT scan here, uh, you can see it. It's in the uh, posterior element of the spine, so it does not come in the body. Uh, it comes usually uh, in the pedicle, and you can see the osteoma surrounded by sclerosis. Regarding the treatment for osteoma, there is basically three main lines of treatment. One of them is conservative, which means long-term anti-inflammatory use. We discussed that uh, osteoma pain uh, responds very good to anti-inflammatory because, as we said, the anti-inflammatory works on the inflammatory cytokines that are released with the tumor. Uh, so you can use, uh, you can do long-term anti-inflammatory, and as the osteoma usually tend to burn out over time however uh, you need to know that this uh, treatment may require uh, one to two years before improvement in the pain symptoms so the first thing is a conservative non-operative which basically means giving the patient anti-inflammatory to control the pain and uh, this treatment requires about one or two years of a treatment with anti-inflammatory for the symptoms to get better uh, the second line of treatment, which is commonly used nowadays, is CT-guided uh, radiofrequency ablation. Um, uh, so uh, this is uh, now most of the cases are treated with this way, in which um, a CT-guided probe is introduced to the nidus, and then uh, a radiofrequency ablation is done uh, to basically to kill this tumor. The third uh, type is a surgical excision, uh, excision and this is um, reserved for lesions that are refractory to ablation or if the site is dangerous to do radiofrequency ablation so if for example the osteoma is very close uh, to the um, uh, uh, spinal cord uh, for example uh, uh, it's not safe to do radiofrequency ablation or if it's uh, subcutaneous and you're worried about skin complication it may be also not um, uh, suitable for radio, uh, radiofrequency ablation in these cases surgical excision is the line of treatment so this is an example of the uh, ct ablation you can see here this is the ct that we showed before for the osteoma and this is a ct ablation so probe is introduced under ct guidance and when it uh, exactly in the uh, lesion uh, radio ablation is done to kill the tumors uh, thank you all my videos are for educational purpose only please consult your doctor before any decision